After the events of the last few months, it, it's a great honour to be able to speak to you all today. I mean, I know the events that have surrounded us might be uncomfortable for some of us. But with the same spirit we got through Marmageddon, I'm sure we can survive Hose Band 2013. I'm Maynard Scott, and if I have to admit to you all, I'm a bit of a water addict. I mean, I need a hit in the morning, six to seven times during the day, and once before bed. This triggered me to figure how much I take water for granted. I mean, I always have plenty of water available to drink. When I'm dirty, I go and wash, and when I have to, I flush. <laughs> it's my love for water that reminded me that Hose Band 2013 coincided with the United Nations International Year of Water Cooperation, a year set out to highlight the need for cooperation and establishment of dialogue among water users. Our friends at the UN say that water cooperation is the peaceful management and use of fresh water at all levels and working together towards a common goal at which is mutually beneficial. Like I did, some of you might be thinking, why do we need water cooperation? I mean, there's always plenty bottled and flavoured at the supermarket. But a, look, a check on the old Google unfortunately found this was not the case. Did you know that our population is growing at a startling rate? It is, it, it is expected to reach 9.2 billion people by 2050. As our population grows, the vital component for all life, water, is becoming harder to access. 780 million people do not have access to clean water. Do you remember how I mentioned when I get dirty I take a shower? One five minute shower uses the same amount of water that the average slum dweller will use in a day. 3.4 million people die of water-related illness per annum. That's the same as almost every person living in an urban area of New Zealand just dropping dead every year. Scarily, the lack of water prevents some of the most important human rights. The right to life the right, and the right to health care and an adequate standard of living. Water is essential to life, but also to hygiene. 2.5 billion people do not have access to a proper toilet or any at all. However, it was while looking at my withering tomato crop that I also realised water is important for another staple of the human life, food. 69% of the world's water is used for agriculture. The UN acknowledges this fact. After all, one of its millennium goals are to reduce poverty. They can't help the impoverished if there isn't enough water, because not enough water means there's not enough food. Now, some of you might be asking, how can we have water cooperation? I mean, there's not even enough to run my sprinkler system. However, the scary fact is, there is. The UNDP in 2006 stated that there is enough water for domestic purposes, for agriculture and for industry. So, it's there, we just need to cooperate around it. The United Nations, it's a privileged position, so to speak. With its 193 member states, it has the power to achieve cooperation over water. Three key ways the UN can do this. By creating legal guidelines and frameworks, by promoting knowledge, and assisting those in need directly, and sharing success stories. When the UN was founded in 1945, it had a goal to stop wars. As our population grows, and as water access becomes scarcer, it is likely that tensions and disputes will rise around water, especially waterways that cross international borders. Think of the River Nile. Eleven countries rely on that river. The law of transboundary aquifers was passed by consensus in 2011 by the UN General Assembly. It provides a framework and recommendations for the suitable and peaceful management of shared water. It is a substantial step forward for water cooperation. And it is a great example of how the UN can provide legal guidelines to, make water, to create water cooperation. Secondly, as my teachers drill into me, knowledge is key. Before today, 
How many of you knew there was a water crisis? Sure, you know, it's a bit dry in other parts of the world, like Auckland. However, <laughs> we do know the extent of the crisis. By promoting the, crisis, the knowledge of the crisis and the benefits of water cooperation, such as reduced poverty and sustainable development, and the challenges of it, climate change, uh, pollution and economics, uh, the first world can become more aware of the situation. They can play their part through education and awareness campaigns. An example of this is World Water Day, which occurred on the 22nd of March this year. Thirdly, the UN and its member states can assist those nations in needs. Now, I'm not saying we should barge in there with a mandated water group which controls every aspect of water, and they go and, and drill all the wells. We, I feel the best way to ensure water cooperation is to help nations fix their own problems. And a success story of this is in Guatemala, where the El Najado River went from being plentiful and clean to scarce and polluted. There were many groups with conflicting views on the river. There were those in rural and urban communities, and the men and the women. Men need it for construction and agriculture, and the women who need it for cooking, cleaning, and washing. A group of experts from the Netherlands came in, and they were able to help them work together and fix their river. There was so much cooperation that this group became surplus to requirements. Member states are in a prime position to be like, that, like the Netherlands. They don't need to be heavily involved, but by facilitating and mediating, they can ensure water cooperation. Robert Alex Silverstein said that water is one of the most basic needs. Now, I'm sorry, I have to interrupt myself now with some breaking news. A Boeing 747 has crashed on approach to Auckland Airport this evening. A large fireball was seen and no survivors have been found. Now, if we heard that, we'd be shocked. We'd be terrified. We'd demand action. However, this happens every day. Poor water kills children at the rate of a Boeing 747 crashing every four hours. Today, 6,000 children will die because of water-related illness. Don't you think it's time for some water cooperation?